Hello and welcome to Makala Foresight. This is Mikhail Munase, producer and host of the show. My guest today is Professor Jan Niesen of Ghent University. The research team he heads has recently uncovered a map prepared by a German Atlas printing house in the mid 19th century. This is part of their research on historical cartography in the Horn of Africa. We will, we will discuss about that today. So welcome, Professor Nissen. Hello, Michael, and I'm glad to be with you. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was reported in the media that this map of the Horn of Africa was previously unseen. Let's start with this. Why mm -hmm. was this map made in the mid 19th century in Germany, kept hidden for all this time until you recently brought it to light? Well, I don't know if it was deliberately kept hidden. There are thousands and thousands of historical maps. Yeah, and I happened, I happened to see a, a, a snapshot of it, a part of it, because we have colleagues in, uh, we have colleagues, historical cartographers who are historians, who are working with these maps and who are analyzing these maps to see how territories shifted over time and so on. And they, they posted like, 10 days ago, they posted a, 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 a part of that map. And then I started searching using some <laughs> search engines, ar artificial intelligence and so on. In, uh, and then I found it back through through internet searching. So I can, I, well, yes and no. Why was it kept? There is not a big, there is not a big uh, complotism all over the world to hide maps. Huh? The maps are freely available. There are, this map is available in two, three different archives. And if you search, you can find it. What is remarkable is that this this Mr. There is somebody in in uh, a bit from the Fano side, let me say, in Amhara region. I'm just looking for his name, uh, Mr. Achamiele. He wrote a whole book about historical maps, but he is only representing the historical maps that give the Amhara point of view about these maps, uh, saying stating that Wolkite belongs to Gondar essentially, and this man in he must have come across these maps. There are like 20 maps that are around the mid 19th century. There is not only this German maps, but there are like 20, 20 maps, different German maps, American maps, British maps, and they are all mapping. That was the time of, of Jazamach Wubie, and they were all mapping uh, Tigray to both sides of the, of the Tikisi. So I think at least for this person, he must have deliberately omitted it. It cannot be that he didn't come across it with all the research that he that he did. But for the rest, it is a matter of we call it serendipity that by chance you come and you see something. Ah, oh, but I have not seen this one, and I pick it up, and that that's how I that's how how I found it. But I must say there are historians who are related, by the way, with McKinley University, who are researching this fully from the historical. Uh, point point of view. Okay, zooming into Western Tigray, uh, in the essay you published regarding your discovery, you wrote, and I quote, the goal here isn't to prove territorial claims based on some, uh, but based on one specific map, but rather to demonstrate that a wide range of historical maps and records reveal that territorial organization has tremendously varied through time. Of course. Yeah. Even that the Red Sea coast, Egypt, Nubia, and the northern and central Ethiopian highlands were known, and Tigray and Amhara mapped in a relatively detailed form. So, given this fact, to what extent does your finding settle the dispute between Tigrayans and the Amhara, who have made references to old maps? census data and historical place names in defending their right to this part of Ethiopia, to rule this um, part of Ethiopia. But you have, you have rightly cited me. Huh? This is this is a map representing the period, the period of the mid 19th century. Huh? Uh, and there has been there has been this. We, there is not only this source, there are other sources. For example, there is also the book by famous historian Pankhurst written in 1990s, quoting sources from the 18th century saying uh, saying Wolkite well, in Tigray. Pankhurst, he writes much with, um, he was Addis Ababa based and he writes with the Amharic background Tigray. 
uh, but he writes several times Wolkheit and Tigre. Huh? This, so the, source, the sources are there. There are other documents that tend to show Wolkheit closer to Begemder. Yeah, and that you can. So I am not picking out one or the other, but I am saying I am saying these maps are also existing. Yeah, and if you want to look at historical maps, you see that there has been changes in territorial control. For a certain time, it was controlled by by Tigre, and for a certain, it has not always. Let's say it in other words, very simply, Volkait has not always been Gondar. Yeah, the maps are clearly yeah. proving that in historical times, it has it has changed. So the existence of various maps and documents uh, and also the debate is to, to acceptable uh, what we saw in this war uh, which is ongoing especially yeah. among the amhara elite is however an attempt to redraw political administrative entities with force and ethnic cleansing uh, so this is being used as an optimal strategy to achieve uh, uh, to achieve political goals, mm -hmm. but but you, what what they do is to pick a, a couple of maps that fits to them. They pick then the maps of the Haile Selassie period, but I think that is the the worst map of all, because that is simply a map of you know that Menelik and Haile Selassie they have previously Ethiopia was like a lot of kingdoms with with hierarchy in it and so on and. You are having Tigray, you are having something in Gondar, you are having you are having Kaffa. But when uh, when Menelik uh, came, he he did he participated somehow in the scramble for Africa. He gave part of the Tigrayan territory to the uh, uh, to the Italians, and then he has totally redrawn all boundaries in Ethiopia. And he was giving to all his vassals some piece some piece of land that they could that they could control. And if you look to map, I have I am having a, a map of. Of that uh, of that period, and I will I will send you. But if you look at that at that map, you see that Gondar, the Gondar province at that time, one third of the Gondar province, it was it, it was inhabited by Tigrinya speakers. The map that I have shown is a map of the languages of Ethiopia in 1975, and the northern part of Gondar were the Tigrinya speakers. From the moment that you shift your paradigm and you you take another approach and that was has, what was has happened in 1990 and you say okay these these provinces this was a construct by Menelik and by by Haile Selassie and we try to organize a country based on the real world of the ethnicity and how the people and how the people interact it makes sense to come to Tigray more or less with the boundaries like it um, like it was now and this map you're talking about struggles uh, you know uh balls areas across the Takeze, right yes that that is then that is then uh, because you know i published this essay about the map of of 1849 by handke and then people start sending me links and uh, i find you no know, dozens of maps and the map that i'm, I'm i found another map already 1841 by a certain by a certain mr wyland and uh, I don't know if you can see it clearly like that. Uh, you see this, the same contour, more or less, of, of Tigray, Tigre, like they write it. Uh, but look to my to my finger; uh, it starts writing Tigre all across the Kese River. So not only the boundary, the boundary is to both sides of the Kese River, but even the writing of Tigre is to both sides. You know, there have been. There have been stupid claims on social media that I am the one who is adding colors on these maps in order to to modify it. No, go to go to the internet, find the originals, and you will see that that they are there. Now this one is even strong; it's even more strong because Tigre is written all across the, starting from Welkite up to uh, up to Agame. Um, now, what is important to say for these maps? These maps show territorial control. These are not maps that uh, these are not maps that represent ethnicity. Yeah, for for instance, it, uh, the map that I was that I was showing you, it is going well beyond one Dutch. Yeah? So that is far into that is far into into Lasta. It was controlled under under Tigre at a certain uh, at a certain moment. So it was a territorial control at that uh, at it was at that moment and this. Uh, this uh, Jasumas Wube was in every 
in every, what we would now say, Warada, or in every, every prince dom, he was having a relative or somebody who was close friend to him through whom he was controlling this territory. And in all these small areas, uh, these people were semi-independent. I don't imagine something like a well-structured state like, like nowadays. Also, the, the geography was helping very much for that semi-independence because all these rivers in the rainy season, uh, they were full of water. You couldn't pass an army to, from one side to the other. So in the rainy season, every kingdom became independent. Yeah? And when the river is down, again, they paid their taxes to, to the, uh, in this case, to, to Raswube. Uh, so what the maps are showing is a territorial control that was exerted from Adwa Aksum area. Huh? Yeah, uh, well, science has to continue, but there are also those who say, what is the point of talking about historical maps when people are dying, when yeah. million, the lives of millions of lives is at stake? Yes, yes, that is that is very important. Let let me give you let me give you two reflections there. Huh? Uh, one is when since a couple of days when these maps are circulating, you should be surprised by the number of insults that I'm getting on social media. Yeah? Up to how look his eyes are not good. How can he draw these lines? This type of of useless of of useless talk. Before a month or something, we made an estimate with our team about the number of people who died in the war. Quarter of a million, up to half a million of people. I didn't get insults for that. Yeah. So people are more, there are people who are more nervous for maps than for half a million, potentially half a million of people who can die. Yeah. So that's something very, very strange uh, for me. So that is one thing. The second thing, we, we should not necessarily argue about old maps. What basically what this map is, basically what this map is is uh, saying is there are so many different maps. If you are going to use old maps and fight against old, about old maps, you will not get out of it. There has been, uh, there has been. I've shown you this map of the languages of uh, this map of the languages of uh, of Ethiopia of northern Ethiopia, also showing that the Tigrinya language. Is widely spoken also to the west of uh, of uh, to the to the west of the Tikese River, and that was the base for making this the new the new uh, the new Tigray. One of the I feel like you cannot dissociate the extent of Tigray territory and the crisis, the war and the crisis that we are having. The worst ethnic cleansing. The most killings were in Western Tigray. Yeah, so that is it's even a lot of that is 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 uncovered. You have like half a million people who have been moved away from from their house. So of course we are not doing a theoretical discussion about maps. We are thinking how get, can this problem get solved? I am there are people from the let me say from the from the Abi side or from the Fano side almost snatching away Western Tigray. It is the main reason is to impoverish Tigray, to take away the most the most fertile lands. Let them go. Let them go to their dry mountains, yeah, and let them and they will not survive in their dry mountains. So it is also a way of of starving Tigray. So that I think that in this whole, hopefully peace negotiations and hopefully they they get through some peace uh, negotiations. Western Tigray is quite essential to to the survival of uh, of Tigray, and then. And then the discussion of about Western Tigray is important, and in that discussion, basically from the Amara nationalistic side, they have been coming with all these old maps. Yeah, and even they they didn't want to talk about language; they only wanted to talk about these old these old maps. And now, with with all these maps that are coming out with the extent of Tigray in the nineteenth in the nineteenth century. And even their argument about his always historically part of Gondar and so on, it is clear that it is not true. And now we can start and now we can have the real discussion. Forget about these historical maps. Yeah, take the real situation. What was the language in Western Tigray? Western Tigray was a, is still, but at that time even less. It was a very poor, very low population density. It was a very wide area, but the communities who were living there, they uh, 
they were speaking Tigrinya. Even the southern, even the southern margins of Western Tigray, that are the, the hilly areas, Dansha and so on, uh, even those those Volkite nationalists who were then who were then coming to Gondar, when they were in Gondar and they wanted to talk secretly in order to avoid some other Gondar people to understand them, they shifted to Tigrinya. Yeah, so they they were very these people were very, of course, and every, everybody in Ethiopia knows Amharic, but these people were very easily switching between the two uh, between the two languages, even in those hills that are close to the border of of Amhara region. So that the so the discussion is let's let's consider the real world. Forget about these forget about these old maps because Tigray has also a lot of maps that show that this has been historically part of of Tigray. If you start discussing about maps, this is very nicely de de delimited it but it was it was a political boundary i told you it gives you territorial control yeah and we have then the other map we have the other map that gives them the ethnicity so after your publication of the findings uh, peace and conflict analyst professor uh, shetel provo reacted and i quote now that the research team headed by Professor Jan Niesen has discovered a German-made map from 1849 clearly stating Wolkite as part of Tigray, the question remains whether Amhara activists will manage to find an even older map stating the opposite. He also wonders how far one can go back. Please, your thoughts on this. Yes, how far can one go back? Huh? You know, at, in 1820, Belgium was part of Netherlands. Uh, then can you imagine that somebody comes, I, I have a map here, it shows. In 1700, Belgium was part of Austria. Yeah, can you imagine somebody comes with an older, yeah, what does it mean an older? That's what we are saying. It is, it is changing through time. That the f mostly uh, you see, they get their Gondar Welkite, you see it close to each other. There is even no boundary drawn. There is not much, there is not much indication on those maps that it was really that it was really part. But would do we need to go back then to the time? I don't know, Aksum or even before Aksum to delimit the boundaries of no, we look we look to the to the real world. What I what to me what is remarkable is that the insults that I'm getting, they come from the from the usual suspects on social media, this uh, Jeff Pierce and so on, and uh, and and, the, and this type of, of really toxic uh, toxic people, I have not seen. You you would expect that those the person uh, the person who wrote this book, three hundred pages with all the maps showing the Gondar point of view, this is a person who should react. Yeah. From the social media, people pick something up. They say that I have been adding lines on the map and so on. Uh, that that's the type of reactions you get. But I have not seen one. I have not seen one uh, serious person, serious researcher, saying uh, how reacting on this. How are we going to handle this situation? Oh, these guys, they have they, this man. He has found maps that show exactly the opposite of as what we have been as what we have been saying. Huh? Maybe they're preparing, they're writing something is possible, of course. Uh, you can also not expect people to react within a couple of days for these uh, for these things. So by 1849, when Hamdke produced his map, Eritrea had not yet come into existence as a separate territory. Mm -hmm. And so uh, does uh, it does not appear on the map uh, as a country. So where did the, the map incorporate that part of the Horn of Africa? But uh, when you took Eritrea at that time, if you look, if you look, if you look to these maps, you have you have uh, the, the the Red Sea coast that was separate, and you were having the uh, and you were having the highlands of Eritrea that were part of that wider Tigray, pro probably more or less the areas in 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 Eritrea where they were where they are speaking Tigrinya, where they are speaking Tigray language. That was part of this Tigray Tigray region. Uh, you were having the Red Sea coast, which was like a sultanate, and then you were having the uh, the lowlands, which basically was indicated like tribal land or something like that, without much uh, without much uh, 
the, the uh, the, that's, that's, that's then a totally different step. Once we reach around 1870, the Italians come, they, and the, the, the scramble for Africa is, uh, uh, is starting, and Menelik uses the opportunity for pushing south, uh, because he cannot keep the, he cannot keep the, the coast of, uh, of the Red Sea, and then he starts, he starts pushing south and taking his share, his small share in the whole scramble for, for Africa. So uh, in your research, uh, you must have come across, you know, literature also uh, outside maps. Uh, for instance, there are other sources that show Tigray was a lot bigger, uh, sometimes four times bigger than what is. Yeah, but then we are speaking again. Then we are speaking again about this territorial control. Yeah. Then we are. Yeah. Even even this map, it goes up to um, it goes up to Dalul, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes up to Dalul because yeah, the Tigray needed needed salt, and they took territorial control on an area from where they could get, uh, which was a safe source of of salt. Yeah, so uh, there is, an, which was a bit the base for, which was a bit the base for uh, for Haile Selassie to give a large part of Afar to Tigray at that time. Yeah, once the new borders have been drawn. There is no more claim on Afar because the Afar people they have their own they have their own lands and they, they they have unified their own their own their own lands. So you wouldn't you wouldn't go into that same into that same mistake as the Gondar as the Gondar people are doing and finding them the one map that shows the bigger the bigger Tigray and that's what yes. we want and that's what we want to have. Uh, I'm having I'm having here a map. Uh, the, the whole Tikesi sources and uh, the whole Lasta um, up to eight, not Kombolcha, but almost Kombolcha is on is included at a certain time was controlled by from from Tigray. If we go that way, we make well, I think the Tigrayans if they go that way, they would make the same you know the same mistake like the the Gondar Gondarans are doing. That has an yeah. That has uh, that has a term in political science, and that's called irredentism. And irredentism is that you don't look the current situations; you look to history and you try to find the bigger historical thing, and then that's what you, yeah. And and that leads when you do that from both sides, it leads to war. Of course, even if you do it from one side, it it leads to war because people get then all ideas about how big it would be. Let me take an example in, in Europe, and the best example is is in, in Germany, it's quite recent. They lost two times the war. The second war was even very bad because they were having Hitler with a very bad, with a very bad political system. Each time on the East, they lost a lot of territory. Yeah, there are few, but there are people in Germany who say, we need to take that back. It belongs to Germany. But you know, if you go for that, this is, it's catastrophe eh? and any serious person in Every serious person in Germany will say, "Yeah, uh, this is our this is our fate. What can we do? Uh, there was Hitler, and we lost we lost last piece of, of Germany. There is no way of there is no way any time to to, to take that back." Eh? But irredentism is finding maps that stretch the farthest, and then and then to say, "No, we need all that because once in time in history it belonged to us." Uh, I, think, I, want, I think, yeah, I want to come back to to Western to Western Tigray where. All these maps, they, uh, you know, at at this time we see Waldaba as a, as a monastery, far in a remote place in the in 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 the in the forest in the bushes. At that time, Waldaba was having still now, but at the time they were having a large territory, and you are having two territories, big territories in Western Tigray. That is Waldaba and uh, and Wilkite. And the essential thing is that thanks to the discovery of these maps, it's clearly proven now that there is no historical ground to say Volkite always belonged to Amhara or Volkite always belonged to Gondar. That is not true. And now the real discussion can start. Yeah, uh, I think it is fair to say that the Tigrayans have uh, long come to terms with the reality. You know, in fact, uh, they are, uh, you know, blamed for organizing the current uh, setup uh, of states, uh, which is based completely on a different set of parameters, people's identity, culture, consent. Uh, what we call, what so, we call federalism, yes. Yeah, so uh, what factors do you envisage 
shaping such an organization going forward? Uh, but now you are talking about the future. You are talking about the future of Ethiopia, and it is much more than about boundaries now. And uh, because so many bad things have, when so many bad things have happened, and we have all seen those, we have all seen those images at Mahabara Dego, and even young girls laughing and shooting prisoners on on the shooting on people on the edge of the cliff and pushing them down. And what I hear from the Tigray people is, how can we live together? Yeah, there are so many bad things have have happened. I think that. Restarting at this time a discussion about uh, a, a discussion about how should every boundary look like in in Ethiopia and uh, well Oromo is is the same with everything that is happening with this Oromo. I've never understood, by the way, with all with this whole federalistic upset, why they made an Oromo region in Amhara. Why not to make an exclave of that area and to attach it to to Oromo, to to Oromia. So I think that. The country is in, in, in uh, because we know we know what is happening. Well, we try to know what is happening in Tigray, but the rest of Ethiopia is not much is not not much better. Eh? The Abiy has put has brought that country back for I don't know for how many for how many decades. So I am not the one who is going to come now. It's also out of my out of my. I'm not a political scientist to come with a recipe how it, how to redraw the next map of of Ethiopia. Eh? Yeah, I am simply saying the the story the story that you say that that uh, well Kite was part of uh, always part of Gondar that's a fake story. Yeah, I wouldn't dare to speak now in the next after the war how is what is going to happen to Ethiopia that's and how it will be redrawn. That's a very will be a very complex issue. We're not out of it. Eh? That's obvious. Yeah, uh, the the point I was trying to raise was you know to to gray to grants uh, have long relinquished this historical claim, you know, and settled to the reality uh, because, you know, that historical claim, uh, this, I mean, this uh, federal arrangement removes most of the, their historical claims, you know, to chunks of territories in Afar, in Amhara. Yeah. 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 And that is, uh, well, let's call it the historical territories. Yes. And and what was what was really existing, if you take, because it, it is valid for each of the highly, let me call it the highly Selassie provinces, uh, not only Gondar was having one third of Tigrinya speakers. If you go to Godjam, the, the total west part is Gumus, is, uh, are Gumus peop people. If you go to Wolo, you are having three ethnicities, Oromo and uh, and Afar and, uh, and Amhara. And once you change, you change the approach and you go for federalism, then you have to cut each of these provinces has been has been cut and re and reorganized. So be, before we uh, finish this uh, interview, uh, can, can you give me some details regarding the the the, the, the other map that you told me uh, th that shows you know the the mapping and also the language uh, the, the the writing that straddles across yeah. the yeah. Tekes. Uh, I mean, is... who, whose map is it? Where yeah. was it produced and all that? Yeah, this is a map. This is a map that was produced in 1965 by Mr. Trimingham. And Mr. Trimingham wrote a book, Islam in Ethiopia. And besides religion, he wanted also to have the ethnicity as a background because somehow religion overlaps and somehow religious boundaries don't overlap at all. With So he needed for his research, he needed a map of languages in Ethiopia. And then in 1975, Mr. Westphal, he wrote a book about the agricultural systems in Ethiopia. And he thought, and we know that agricultural systems, somehow it is related to ethnicity. Gumu's agricultural system is totally different from Amhara agricultural system. So he wanted also a map of languages and he reused that, that map. But that is a map in every atlas of Ethiopia that existed in the emperor's time. Also in their time, they took the languages something like this but generally like this cutting across the regions there has never been a claim that these that these provinces were ethnically homogeneous yeah so this is this is a language map i you know in in modern in modern mapping you don't we don't work with black and white maps anymore this would be a, a flashy colorful map and we i could start it i could start it coloring on all that but i don't want to do it because it's a historical document and uh, we should keep it like that as an as an evidence, but you see here, you see here the 
uh, the, I've written, given the legion for Amharic, for Tigrinya, and for, for Tigre. And you see then the, well, the, the occurrence of the Amharic language, and you see the occurrence of Tigrinya language in the, re in the Tigray province. And then also to the other side of Tekeze, up to the border of Sudan, that was all Tigrinya speaking in 1965. Uh, and that has then been used to delimit bound, well, no, well, this and similar maps, these maps are very, were very common in the 1960s, 1970s, maps with, with ethnicities of Ethiopia that has then been used for drawing regional boundaries. Well, I think uh, I have exhausted my questions on my part. So if you have any final thoughts, I think the floor is yours. Well, hoping, hoping that the war, hoping that the war gets over, hoping that all these people who have been displaced can go to their land and work on their land. Because now I'm very happy to, I just heard that rain is coming in Dogatembian at least, and that farmers are getting ready to sow their, are getting ready to sow their crops. They have not received improved seeds, but they have, they have all kept some seeds from the last, even this, if there is famine, you cannot eat your seeds and the farmers have started sowing. That is what I hear, the latest that I heard this this morning. And that is for the moment they let the politicians and the military find solutions. But the people need to live in their village and they have plowed everything. And now they have started sowing, at least in, in my in my area, uh, Dogatembian. But everywhere the farmers will be very active to try to let the com communities uh, survive. And we are back to that stage uh, where the communities are working their land and doing their best to survive on their own. So thank you, Professor uh, Neeson, for uh, this very illuminating interview and for the hard work uh, and, uh, on, in your research. And, you know, uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing this also because the people in Tigray have been since 1994 so hospitable to me and hosting me in the villages and in the towns and in Mekele and I think it's a bit normal what I'm what I'm doing. Okay. Thank you, Thank you and have a good day. Talking with you.